Hello there, chess lovers. Let's learn about the Arabian mate. This is very important. One of the most important mating patterns in chess, in my opinion. And it's also of, of uh, historical importance because uh, the knight and the bishop used to be uh, the strongest pieces before chess migrated to Europe and then the queen was introduced. So you can find old chess possessions and puzzles where the knight and the rook are the strongest and, and they share the same characteristics as they do today. So this is a very, very strong mating pattern. Let's dive into it. So this is the final position. This is the Arabian mate. The king is stuck in the corner. We have a nice knight here on f6. It covers the g8 square. It covers h7. And it protects the rook. And the rook delivers the final blow. Usually, it could be on, on like you saw on h7, like here, or on g8. So if the rook was on the g file, it could checkmate right here on g8. So these are sort of the important ways that you, you can checkmate in the Arabian mate. So before we move on to some examples, uh, I would really appreciate if you, if you like my videos, liking makes YouTube and the algorithm know that you do appreciate such videos. And also if you haven't sub subscribed, that lets me know that you do appreciate such quality content. So let, let's go. Let's see some examples and what this beautiful mating pattern looks like in practice. So let's start with a position here. White to move. Mikhail Krasenkov with white, a Polish grandmaster. And he's playing against Bartosik, who is also a strong player. And here, uh, Krasenkov moved his knight into a menacing position here on f6. And he's lining up for the mate, the Arabian mate. First of all, if he takes the knight, then we can simply move our queen up right here and give mate. If he takes with the queen, then we lose control over this, and it's going to be mate. So in the game, black tried rook takes h3, but turns out there's no saving here. And the rook now comes to g8. First we saw it on h7, but now we see it on g8. And of course, the MVP knight, the beautiful knight on f6, covers everything there is to cover. This example, a very strong grandmaster with the black pieces was defeated here after rook f7. Queen is attacked, we had the queen trade, and he played his bishop out, but his position was probably quite hopeless. But here he allowed white to play knight f6, and this grip here with the knight is so strong that you can give black a free move. He can take this, but nothing happens because we have the knight and everything is in place, and we have the mate. Also, maybe a quick mention of some other ways that we can use this mating pattern. Usually, the pure Arabian mate is in the corner, but some st sometimes we see constructions like this, where the knight is actually protected, and then we can give mate on h7. We can also imagine uh, if we, well, let's just place maybe a pawn here, remove the rook, get a white rook. And move it here and do we need to cover this maybe a pawn maybe a white piece so if, if we're going this way then all of a sudden we're going to give mate on g8 so the king can be mated on on g7 and on h8 so the pure arabian mate is in the corner but sometimes we can we can move around like this and i'm actually gonna show you one example of that here white has actually a beautiful finish. It's white to move. And he can play the move queen to f6. King goes to g8. And now queen g7. Fantastic queen sacrifice. Black has to take it. What do we do now? We move in. We get the knight on this beautiful square. Setting up our pattern. And now with 
the light covered and the fleeing square on the control, pawn on g6. We can actually give the mate with, with the king on g7 like this. But most of the time you will use this, this setup and this pattern uh, with the knight on f6 and the king being mated on h8. So how do we break through here? In this game, Joseph Gallagher had the white pieces against Andy Samora. Very nice finish. He has the rooks on the seventh. The aim of getting rooks on the open file is to get the rooks on the seventh. And that was the key here. The rooks line up pretty nicely. On the seventh, we can actually play a very nice move, queen to h6 here. Threat is to take immediately. You take an f6, the rook covers this. And if you take the queen, then rook takes h7. Checkmate. Actually a bit of an overkill because we only needed, needed one rook to be on the seventh for this to, to work. This example right here is a variation from my own game. Very pretty example. It's white to move and mate in three moves. Can you figure it out? I'll give you one sip of my AS crystal. To figure it out. Have you? I'm sure you have. Queen takes h6, that's what I played, would have played actually, so <laughs> this variation didn't happen, but this is what I had planned. Knight takes f7, rook takes, and now we've seen this, this strong knight, and curse the rook coming to g8, checkmate. Here is a very nice example using using the Arabian mate as, as uh, the setup. For, for some tactical threats. So we don't see the actual mate here, but the threat of the mate is what decides the game. So Black's last, uh, last move here was bishop c8 takes f5. And from f5, the bishop, well, has a double attack on the rook and the queen. So Black will regain the material unless white comes up with something. And Eduardas Rosenthalis, he came up with just that, something. He played knight to f6, check. Pawn is pinned, so the king has to move. And now the very nice setup here. Bishop takes a g7. And this allows Rosenthaler to now take on f5. And white is simply up material because black can't take here on account of rook e8, check. Followed by. Uh, Rook g8 mate. Of course, rook, queen f8 is better, but black is simply going to be up a rook in that case. Sorry, down the rook <laughs> in that case, so uh, game over. But this would be the mate if, if it happened. Miguel Ilescas Cordoba knew very well of this pattern and he used it to full effect against Nigel Short in their game. And he took on e6, allowing Nigel to push the pawn, pawn to a2. But he's setting up the mating pattern. And in fact, black can queen with jack. We can give him a free move to get a new queen. But it's not enough because the queen can't get back to the defense. We have a trade. And we would need the queen to get back on this diagonal to cover the square. But can't do that. We can't put anything on the seventh. So this is actually forced mate, nothing to be done. We could give some spite checks, but that's just delaying the inevitable. And in fact, after b6, rook h7 is checkmate. Let's have this example. A simple one. White is down the exchange, but through a series of forcing moves, we can bring the knight into action here. And because we have a rook on d8, there's going to be mate on f6. And if the king goes the other way, it's Arabian mate, check and checkmate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think 
we only have this one left. This is from one of, definitely one of my favorite games, Kramnik with the black pieces. Can you figure out what it did? We already have the knight in place, so we just need to put put the pieces together and look at the forcing moves. Do have a video on funding tactics where you use forcing moves, checks, captures, threats. Let's leave a card to that video. The most forcing move is a check, but queen takes, and we're not going to mate on a2. But we also look at the captures, and there's a very forcing capture here. Rook takes b2, which is the solution. Mate is threatened on a2 with a queen and with a rook. So we don't have time to take this on account of either rook a2 or, or queen a2. So we go back. Root takes b2. This was special takes and then either one mates. And if root takes b2, well, what now? Our queen is under attack. Our rook is well under attack as well. And the knight, everything's under attack. We can't take on b2 because white will have to take. And the queen check here, the king runs. But we can force our way into the Arabian mate, can't we? Well, I'm sure you're knowledge of this excellent pattern should be enough here knight is in place we just need the rook in place and we get that in place by diverting the rook from b1 or from the b file in fact and this is the decisive checkmate so that's the arabian mate a powerful pattern that well you hopefully should have mastered by now and you will be able to apply in your games so much so that this puzzle should be quite easy to you. Easy for you, in fact. Uh, black to move. And I'm going to leave it up to you. What's the winning move for black? Tell me in the comments. Show me that you've mastered the Arabian mate. And stay tuned for more videos. We're going to... Yeah, we're going to we're gonna master the checkmate, the art of the checkmate in, in chess and other tactical patterns. Stay tuned. This is where you want to be.